are listening to the Iron Angel Podcast. Tune in weekly as your host, Duran and Michaela, share life stories, gaming updates, and insight behind life as a YouTuber and gaming entertainer. Without further ado, here are your hosts, Iron Angel and Iron Wifey. Hello there. Hey. I like how she says that. Oh my goodness. Hi guys. Welcome to, what is this called? The Iron Angel Podcast. That's right. The Iron Angel Podcast. Now, previously, it was into the game. Yes. Yes, it was. But you decided to change the name. Why? You decided to change the name. <laughs> I was like, wait, it wasn't me. Like, wait, you put that on me? Dude, you're supposed to play along. You're supposed to play no, along. No, I play along with the truth. I, I, I the did not. Truth, de- no, no, The no, truth no. is you decided. No. I just agreed. No, that's I, then that's you deciding. No, I, I just agreed decide, to your decision. No, I didn't decide to change the name of the podcast. I just made a suggestion. He was like, I, I'm just going to change the title the name. No, no. How does this no. sound? And I was like, okay, that sounds no. cool. Because I'm easy going. So she knew I was going to say yes anyway. No, that is not what happened. Tell the people what really happened i just did you and did husbands not. y'all know y'all got my back y'all oh like when gosh. your wife just say something just say yes and if it's nothing that serious just say yes and that's no. what i did no and it Let actually me... works very well iron angel podcast works a lot better than into the game yes so i agree and See? i told him i was like honey you know what i was thinking that maybe you could change the name of the podcast to the iron angel podcast and he was like done which means what decision made so what it means led I you agree. to that decision? <laughs> it means I agree. Because <laughs> the thing is, and as a husband of six years, I've learned some things are extended for no reason. So just agree with stuff like that. Just say, you know what? Yes. Decision made. Exactly. Yeah. Shout out to the wives. No, yep, you made that decision. <laughs> y'all make that decision. We just say yes. It's like, yep, sure. Oh, my goodness. Well, anyway, guys, Keeps a smile welcome. On face. Welcome to the Iron Angel podcast. Previously into the game. Uh, if you guys have been following Iron Angel for some years, you would know what. Shout out to that? the OGs. Yes. What was that like back in 2018? 18 or 19. Yeah. Back in 2018, we decided to do a podcast called Into the Game and it was only on YouTube. And so now, bless you. No, no, mm, no. Sneeze, no, just uh, a hiccup. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so we are bringing that back. But instead of Into the Game, it's Iron Angel because now we can talk about anything instead of just gaming. Yes. So. So if you're listening, this is the first episode, and we want to know what you guys want us to talk about. So comment below. Maybe and I'll just in a section. I'll help y'all out. Anything politics or different religious beliefs, we're not going there. No. I mean, you believe what you believe. I we believe what we believe. We all need to be happy at the same. You know, I'm tired of these old arguments over beliefs like that. So. This is an enjoyment podcast. Let's put it that way. We can talk about sports. We can talk about entertainment. We can talk about life stuff. Yes. You know, let's just keep it, you know, away from those subjects. I agree completely. Because I can give a care about politics. And I believe when it comes to religion, I believe what I believe. And, you know, me and my circle, we all have the same belief system. If y'all don't, that's cool. You know, moving on. Respect it. Yeah, it's a respect thing over here. No hate, no No. foe, whatever y'all want to throw out there. So. But anything outside of those topics, any conversations, any interesting debates that you feel like we should have, mm-hmm. let us know. Comment below. <laughs> that would be interesting. What are you thinking? I don't like when you chuckle. It makes me nervous. No, I ain't going to share it now. Oh, what do you mean? You're already... I want to no, wait for the comment. I want to no, wait for the comment hot. section. The mic is of, hot. You gotta, no, you said you debates. And I'm like... I know some fun debates, but no, we'll uh, hold that for another episode. This episode, we're going to talk about something of my past that actually sort of helped me to move forward into going full time on YouTube. Yes. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, though. Yes. Now, actually, let's just get to that right now. Now, I oh, don't want you okay. now before we get into the logistics, before we get into the deep, deep. Right. A lot of people don't know how you got started on YouTube unless they watch the video how I got started on YouTube. Right. This is only one <laughs> video in the thousand videos I've made. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can look it up. It's on my own. I have a playlist on my channel saying on camera vids. I have it on there. I explain it. Makes it easier for y'all to see it. Yeah. It's on my so homepage. I just want you to do like a brief synopsis because you know you like to talk. Mm-hmm. A brief synopsis of how you got started on YouTube. And then we'll get into the real reason, like the how, how, the details that led to you actually starting. Oh, well, how I got into YouTube was uh, in North Carolina. This was before I met. Uh, well, no, we, me and Michaela met. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, I didn't even know what YouTube was. And YouTube has been around for 11 some years during this time that I knew that I've seen it. But I'm not a technology specialist. I don't do things on my phone or online internet. I just wasn't that guy. Shout out to my friend Kyle. He was a. Uh, hey was, Kyle. Hey Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> hey Logan. But um. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, we was on break at work. I worked at Target at the time, and uh, he was watching some on his phone. Some uh, guy playing video games, and I was wondering what that was. I was like, oh, I thought he was playing video games. He was like, mm-hmm. No, this is YouTube. Long story short, I got amazed with it. I started checking it out for myself, and I realized this was something I was doing already. I was an entertainer in gaming for my friends before the cameras and, you know, recording and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So once I learned that you can actually have it as a job, you know, I was amazed. And I jumped right into it. And I didn't know what I was doing. But the full details of that story is on my, like I said, I have an on-camera video explaining it. But that's the quick, the quick story of it. All I right. always believe it was meant to be because I never knew what YouTube was. Oh, yeah. And you were I what, never like heard of it. Yeah. My friends was like, you don't know what YouTube has been around for like 12 years. I'm like, I have Seriously. never heard of it. They was like, wow, this was meant to be because if I, they assumed that if I knew it earlier, you would have been I on probably, the train earlier. Yeah. yeah. You would have been making like you would have been one of the original OG YouTubers. Yeah. But it was like it was meant to be for you to start now. So, yeah. Perfect. But the details we'll get into. Uh, but certain things in my life when it came to the work field, the nine to five life, we'll get into that in a second, which helped me push me forward into going full time. Oh, yeah. And guys, this is Iron Angel and Iron Wifey. I don't think we introduced ourselves. Yeah, you did in the beginning. Did I? Yeah, I believe so. I think that was our test run. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. What's up? I mean, y'all know what this is. <laughs> yeah. But OK, so let's talk about you. You already mentioned, you know, when you were first introduced to YouTube. But let's talk about your work life. Now, you just happened to. What? What's wrong? Oh, I thought you was going to check it to make sure the beginning was good. Oh, we should be good. We okay. checked it before. All right. Yeah, this is a test run. It's our first time doing this. So. Well, technically, we had like five test runs before this. Oh, and we well. were all failures. Uh, true. So we actually heard our last test run. It sounded pretty legit. So we're just going to keep this conversation going. All right. Let's do it. And if it doesn't work out, then we'll just have to re-record. <laughs> no, we'll just post it and just put in the description. <laughs> say, hey, this is the first one. You so, know, yeah, guys. Because the stuff I'm about to get into is... It's you know, good. It's good. It's good, guys. And yeah. bear with us with these. If I don't even know if you're listening to this and we have technical difficulties. We just know we had technical difficulties setting this up, but we got new equipment, y'all. So we're going to try. Yeah, we're trying to learn it. But the more we do it, the more easier it gets. We're exactly. going to start doing this once a week. So, yes, you know, during those that time frame, uh, we'll practice other things to try to get better with it uh, before the next episode and all that. But anyway. Yes. Without further ado, um, our topic of conversation today is getting fired for doing the right thing Ooh, so good yeah now you give them a brief synopsis of your work history like from the beginning of work history up until the now. beginning yeah well so i used cool. to work for my uncle uh shout out to uncle kevin i used to work for him he had a real estate business and i would cut grass for him i was like 12 or 13 i wanted to make some money my parents always used to say the you want this, you got to get some money. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm going to get some money there. So, you know, do it the right way. I went and asked, asked around and my uncle heard that I was looking for a job. So he asked me just to cut grass for his properties. You know, 12, 13, that's a big deal. Hey, and so, money. yeah, so money is money. And then I got my um, actual job in the work field of, um, how you want to say it? Because that's Your nine to five. Yeah, my nine to five at 14 years old at Kroger. Mm, excuse me. I was a bagger at Kroger and a cashier from 14 to 16. Then from 16 to, man, man 24, <laughs> 23, 24, I worked at Target. And shout out to everybody, um, all my friends who I still keep in contact with or see them on social media at Target. That was some great memories. Mm-hmm. I met a lot of great people there. Ray Jean, Jeff, Jen, the other Jen. I mean, the list is so many people. Some still follow me, so you know I want you know give them a little shout out. And after there, I left and went to GameStop, mm-hmm. which will be the first story I'm gonna share of getting fired for doing the right thing. We'll get there in a second. Mm-hmm. And after, well, since I kind of spoiled it, they're getting fired from there. Mm-hmm. I worked in LA Fitness, mm-hmm. which is the second job getting fired for doing the right thing. By the mm-hmm. way, these are the only jobs in my life I ever got fired from because. 
my mind, I mean, y'all see how I am with my channel. I'm a hard worker. I'm always going to put, you know, double effort, 100%, 200%. And I did that, at you know, everywhere. So I never was in a position of getting fired, except these situations. Yes. And then after that, LA Fitness, shout out to, you know, the Lord blessing me with my wife and the connection she had. Emoji, Kelly, I was able to work at the hotels at Marriott yeah. right away, right after that situation. And that was nice because we that was to nice. work together. Yeah, and that, that was, was nice. So me and my wife worked together. And then, you know, after three years of my wife telling me I should do YouTube full time, because I did do YouTube as I was working. Mm -hmm. That was like really tough because I would get like two hours of sleep because I was dedicated to both. But then she kept telling me for three years straight to just go full time. But, you know, for the men out there, even the women who are out there trying to take care of rent or this, or you got a family and stuff, that's hard to fathom. It's like, man, I got to take a step of faith, believing that something's going to work out, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but that's what you have to do. You have to do that. But anyway, so yeah, after the hotel, I left and did full time. And now we're here two years later. Now, let's go ahead and get into the All story. Right. GameStop. Yes. Lord <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. First off, let me say this. I want to get this out the way first. There's no hate to the GameStop as a uh, the whole business of GameStop. There's no hate to LA Fitness as a whole. These were just terrible managers. Individual people. Yeah, the individual people is what made the situation bad. So I have no issue with the whole company. Actually, the GameStop I visit now for my YouTube stuff and, you know, I buy stuff there. They're great. Shout they out to really the people here in San Diego. You just be giving all these shout outs. Yeah, they're, I love giving people shout outs. That's mm -hmm. just what I do. They're, they're great, you know, but shout out to people there. Um, Mission Valley, too, in case the GameStop listens like, which one? Mm -hmm. So they, <laughs> they can hear good news. Shout out to them over there at Mission Valley GameStop. And LA Fitness, I haven't been there since that situation happened. But anyway, we'll get there in a second. GameStop, I worked there for a year and a half, two I years. It was six months, or was that? Oh wait, no, no, no. I feel like it wasn't that long. It was like a year or six. Oh, it was. I think I it was, was almost like a year. Months. I don't know. However long it was. Um. First off, I was already not happy working at GameStop. Like I left Target only because I've been there for so long. It was like nine years, and I was like, okay. This is before I knew what I wanted to do and all that stuff. This was, I was doing YouTube partly, but didn't know if I should go all the way in. So I was tired of doing the same thing at Target. I went and tried something else. I love video games. Y'all know that. So I was yeah. like, okay, well, GameStop, I mean, that should be a fun job. I'm a hard worker, but we, you know, we're not just there to work hard, but we're also there to show great customer service, meet gamers who are customers, help people who don't know games. And I'm having, you know, this is yeah. my mindset. I mean, we thought it was like the perfect combination between right. like working at Target and being a gamer. Like yeah, we because thought that was like the perfect job. One thing, and this is not to toot my own horn, but one thing at Target I was always told was I'm the hardest worker in the building and I have the, a great personality. And he does, guys. Like, he he literally works. When you talk about jobs, like, he gets on me all the time talking about being there 10 minutes early. Yep. You're working late. extra you're hard. Time. Lord Jesus. Here we go. But, you know, like, he is. He's one of those, like, very on top of it people. And even, like, it doesn't matter what job he's doing. How he, tired I am. It doesn't matter how tired he is. Like, he is going to show up, give you 150%, and then come home exhausted and then give his YouTube channel 150%. So wifey was not happy. Yeah. And so when I went to GameStop, it was totally different than mm -hmm. what I thought. First, I had the most dry boss ever. He didn't have a personality at all. But that wasn't the reason that stuff happened. But anyway, when I, my point is, as soon as I was trying to, I never forget the first situation, the first week of being there. I'm about the guest, you know, talking to him, showing the game, explaining the game and all that stuff. Have it, you know, actually being in customer service, you know, for those who know what I'm talking about, retail, mm -hmm. that's what you're supposed to do. You know, I, I had a talk with my boss. He pulled me to the corner. <laughs> I never forget this. He was like, uh, you're doing it wrong. And I was like, uh, what do you mean? His name was Zach. I won't say his last day, but he's like, I was like, what do you mean? He was like, you got to talk to him about what was it at the time? The, the credit uh, card. The, yeah, the credit card and the power of reward. I'm like, oh, okay, but all right, that's fine. I can mention that. I didn't know because I didn't know because I wasn't really in my training. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, okay, I can add that. But I was also talking to the guests about selling the game. Well, no, you got to sell the pre-owned one, not the new one. I'm like, okay, all right. I, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to make sure the guests is experienced. But they were so focused on certain numbers and certain cards. Like, you know, I remember he told me guests is the second priority. I would never forget. I was like, guests is the second. Wait, 
I thought he was supposed to be here to make the guest happy. He says, no, let's make sure we get our numbers right. Then we get to make the guest happy. So I'm already thrown off. I'm like, wow, because Target, shout out to Target. They was not like that. Mm-hmm. They was about their Target red cards. For those who work at Target, I know what I'm talking about. But they was also, first and foremost, making sure the guest was happy that we're giving them a great experience. Because, you know, if you work in retail, if you gave them a great experience, they're going to come right back. Uh-huh. If you're there, though, and you're like, hey, get this credit card, get this card. They're like, OK, he's getting on my nerves. I know because I would hate to be approached like that. Mm-hmm. I'm not going back to that building for you to nag me about a car. So that was already on, the, you know, weird. And I never forget there was a guest because I'm a this is I'm going to try to make this part fast. But there was a guest who went to my boss <laughs> and told him this was when I was like three months in the business. And he she told him the only reason a lot of us come here is because of that young man right there. And mm-hmm. she was pointing at me. She said, like, y'all always nagging about the cards. Y'all never see how our day is going. Y'all never help us on what the right game is. Y'all just point at the game that gives y'all money. Like she was going off. She was a mother of like three. Mm-hmm. And she was like, this man makes sure my day is good. What kind of game does fit my kids? She was like, you know, you can't offer me Grand Theft Auto. I have six year olds. He offered me, he, he looks at my kids. He looks at my whole situation. And my boss did not like that at all so I'm already getting looked at as the bad guy even though I was doing the right thing Mm -hmm. now that's not even the reason I got fired so let's go into the getting fired part but I said all that before to let you know that GameStop wasn't what I thought you think it's about video games and no it was just about making money which I understand about money but you gotta it's a way to do it yeah we know it's a business yeah the customer comes first yeah you gotta give them a, a reason to keep giving you their money yeah you can't just nag them because I has I just I used to see so many uh, guests get mad at my employees because um, not my employees but my coworkers or my boss specifically because he was just business first, mm-hmm. you know instead of checking on the guests. There was a couple of guests that was cool with them because he was there for a long time, but outside of that, you know it was the same thing over and over. But anyway, so and anybody who's worked holidays know what I'm talking about with this. Mm-hmm. So. November comes around, and we all know, uh, for Friday. those who are retail, that from the holidays, November to f- probably February, because February is when people like to return a lot of stuff on Christmas, it's the most one of the most busiest times, mm-hmm. one of the most busiest times ever. So at Target, we was always told if a guest say that a price of something is actually $5 or $10 less, just give it to them. Yeah. Don't try to call the boss and say, hey, can I change this? So, but, but instead I mean, of assuming, I, when, when I worked at Target with you, it was that same training. Yeah. So instead of assuming that it goes to the game side, because I saw how my boss was, I'm like, he'd probably be scared to mm-hmm. give somebody a dollar off. I'm like, let me just ask to be respectful. I said, so in case a guest comes up to us and say, hey, and we have a long line, in case a guest comes up to us and say, hey, uh, this is not the price, it was $10 cheap or whatever, what will you want me to do? And he told me, look, Give it to him. Do, and he gave me a warning. He gave all of us a warning. Don't come to me about $10 off or five. He said, we're too busy. It's going to be the busiest of the whole holidays. Don't come to me. Simple instructions, right? Mm-hmm. Simple. And so I never forget the holidays go. No problems whatsoever. It's the holiday rush. You know, nothing new. We come Black Friday, yada, yada, yada. Let's fast forward all the way to February or the end of January. So beginning of February, end, uh, end of January. I come home. I go to work normal day, whatever. Someone says Duran come in the back room. I'm like, okay, again, I'm thinking nothing of it. I'm just moving on. Go in, security's back there. I'm like, what the? <laughs> I'm like, what the mm-hmm. heck? What's going on right now? And my boss is sitting there. His big, his, uh, his boss came, the district manager came in. That district manager, he was just out of touch. With a lot. He just didn't know anything about gaming. He was just there hey what how many cards you you know so he wasn't even about the retail life the customer service like he was just about how many credit cards you got you know so I'm confused I'm like uh what's going on they had a whole table set out for me I'm like he was like sit down I'm like uh okay I'm confused as heck and they accused me of stealing from GameStop I never forget this. I was like, I'm sorry, I did what? I would never forget the phone call you gave me. Yeah, I was like, I did what? He was like, uh, you stole from us. And how much was it, honey? Oh, yeah, here's yeah, another yeah. thing, tell, too. Tell them First, let me get the dates. November, he has this this security guy. I think he's cute. He was being cute. He had a, a receipt, went from November to January. So that's two months. Mm-hmm. A total of $35. Mm-hmm. They really thought I spent time 
And it was from, oh, by the way, it was from decreasing the price of these guests. Which your boss told you yes. to do. Yes, he gave, he told me to do. There was a long line and someone came to you with an issue. Yes, he was like, just do it. That's, that's his famous line because he was, he was very short with his words. He doesn't explain, he just, just do it. So I did. I did thirty-five dollars mm-hmm. for two the Christmas holiday. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Thirty-five dollars. Anyway, so I'm already shocked. I'm like, first off, I don't steal. Let me to get that out of the way. I don't steal anything, nope. especially something that thirty-five dollars. Come on now. Come on, man. Like, <laughs> I don't care how much I need money or nothing like that. I would never steal one, and then especially thirty-five dollars. So I'm, I'm like, I, I kept saying no. I'm not. I'm. I didn't steal anything. And I'm looking in the side of my eye because I'm waiting for Zach, my boss, to speak up for me mm-hmm. because right now it's the security guy and the district manager wrote trying to get on me. He's like, well, where did this happen? I was like, I lowered their price, yes, but I never stole. I never stole anything. And he was like, well, the receipt says you did. I said, I don't care what the receipt say. I didn't steal anything. Mm-hmm. So you want me? I said so for two whole months you got thirty five dollars total, and I wish I you know I don't wish I had the receipt, but the receipt is funny. It shows like four dollars here, two dollars here, mm-hmm. thirty five. That's not even worth the whole game. It's on not. sale it's unless really it's like a not. big sale. And I'm like, oh my goodness. All right, so I keep looking at my boss Zach, and he ain't speaking up for me whatsoever. And I'm like, uh, this is weird. So I had a decision right then and there, and. Because the district manager and the security guard wasn't believing in me at all. Mm-hmm. Even though, I, like I said, the whole time being there, I never gave them a reason to not trust me. Never. I showed up when they need me to work extra. I was there, you know. You were opening the building. Yeah, a couple of times. Like, I, yeah, no, not be, a couple of times. No, a lot, nice lot of times. I did. Yeah, like, we was yeah, right down the we street. Right so down we street. helped out. So they would call and be like, hey, I can't make it on time. Can you go open up the building? LA on Fitness your, did that a lot. Off, no, but, I know yeah. LA Fitness, but I remember GameStop. On your days off, you would go in oh, and yeah. open up and wait for them to get there so you can leave. Mm-hmm. So my boss, again, is not saying nothing. So I made a decision. And at that time, and I, and I would advise never do this. So I lied. And here's why. Let me explain. I was going to just rat out my boss and say, you know what? No, he told me to do it. But in my mind, don't rat on nobody. No, don't do snitch. that. Yeah, snitches don't. Yeah, I just, <laughs> but this is a job. Yeah. It's like, this is a different situation. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, if someone I know, is, you know, if someone I hear is doing something like crime-wise that can get me in trouble, if I say something, uh, I'm not saying nothing. You know, but something that's my job, mm-mm. No, 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 no. And I should have spoke up because I, I, he sat there with no blink in his eye and just looked at me. And the reason I didn't say anything to about him, y'all, is because for months since I've been there, he was telling me about he was so close of getting promoted. Mm-hmm. And I wanted that for him. I was wanted that. I wanted that for him. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm, I, and he kept saying it. He's like, I'm so close. I'm so close. I'm so close. So I know me saying this could mess up his opportunity. Yeah. So I lied. I said, you know what? Yeah, I took it. I just said that he's like, and the security guy, because it was too late, I couldn't turn back from that now. So the no, security guy had me write it down. He's like, okay, well, write that down. And I was so sick because I'm just waiting for him to speak up. I'm like, before I write, he's gonna stand up and say, no, 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 no. I told him whatever it takes, mm-hmm. give him the discount. That's the exact words, whatever it takes, do, do the discount. Cause I remember there was moments where, and this is where they really was mad. There was moments in the holiday where our computer was messed up and it was like, you know, I remember, I forgot the assistant manager's name, but anyway, I forgot his name. Uh, but we would have, if you were at GameStop, you know this, you get a discount at GameStop. I don't know if it happens now, but I would, and we had this card and I remember it was some guests where their prices were just, a, was like 10% or something like that off where my card, if I scan it, it goes right off because our computer wasn't working. Mm-hmm. And our assistant manager was like, use your card. I was like, oh, okay, bam, used it, moved on. Now, they thought I was trying to steal for points, even though those $35 ain't giving you no point, ain't much no. points. So you really tell me, so none of their logic made sense. Mm-mm. It was like, even if I use it for points, that's the dumbest thing ever. And people who work at GameStop know what I'm talking about. I don't know if it's happening now. This was, I was like six, five, six years ago. But um, yeah. No, that was a long time ago. Yeah, so who knows? <laughs> Things could change with the rules and everything. 
But yeah, so anyway, what happened was after I wrote it down, the district manager was acting all cool. He was like, you know what, Duran? We all make mistakes. And by the way, that's my real name, y'all, uh, Duran. He was yeah. like, we all make mistakes. It's all good. How about you just go to the ATM, get the $35, and we'll act like this never happened, this didn't happen, or something like that. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, okay, that's it. Now, I know I didn't steal it, but I want to keep my job because yeah. until I find something else because I got to pay my bills and stuff. So I'm literally, Target's right across the street. I go to Target, get $35. I'm sick as a dog, like not, like not happy because I know I didn't do it. And the loyalty was, it was yeah. very wrong because I know if I worked at Target, they would have, and that's why I say I give Target a shout out because a lot of people I worked there, they would have stepped up. For the truth. Yeah. They was like, you know what? If it risks my job, it is what it is. I did tell Duran to do this because mm -hmm. that's the one thing I'm going to do exactly what my boss tells me to do. If he tells me and we get in trouble, I'm like, look, I did exactly what you said. So that way there's no issues. Mm -hmm. And people at Target knew that. They was like, you know what? Yeah, I told Duran that. They would do that for me, you know. But uh, so I get the $35 and come back. As soon as I put it in his hand, he says, you're fired. <laughs> And I froze and I'm like, you mean you sat there and did all this nice speech to me to just fire me right after that? I realized he went, he wanted to make sure he got $35 back because he'll look like an idiot to actually sue me for $35. Yep. You know, and I never forget, I turned around and cause Zach was sitting right behind me and I looked right at him and he looked right away. I'm like, wow. Because me and Zach started to actually get along a lot that time. We, after like the first few months, we really clicked. Mm -hmm. It was like, I, I thought, you know, his girlfriend would come by. She was nice. You know, I got to know them both and mm -hmm. all this stuff. Zach, I still this day, I still know Zach loves pizza, you know, and all this and stuff and yada, yada, yada. I had, the, shout out to employees, the coworkers there too. They were cool. You know, they were cool. One of them left at the right time. But uh, yeah, and I was in shock. I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. They literally just fired me for doing what, for one, for $35 <laughs> that I don't have because I never did it. Nope. You know, the security guard is dumb because I kept saying no. And I looked and I looked at, I told him, I never, I don't have a reason to lie to you for 30, you know, I'm $35, bro. Yeah. It literally, y'all, I kid you not, it took me like 20 minutes to finally say yes. And I ain't going to front. My yes was so unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Like, you couldn't even believe me saying, like, you know how they usually say, I don't believe. When you're like, no, I didn't do it. And they say, I don't believe that. No, me saying I did do it was not even believable. Mm -hmm. They were like, no, he's lying. He didn't do it. Him saying, yes, he did was not even believable. I was just like, yeah, sure, I did it. I did. I said it just like that to where it was like, okay, he didn't do it. Somebody told him to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm mad. I'm pissed. So I left, but I kept a straight face. I never forget, and I just walked out the door, and I and I had to keep my to keep my anger inside until I got in the car. And again, I almost had a moment where I almost ratted Zach out anyway. But I was like, no, don't do it, and it wouldn't probably wouldn't matter anyway because on paper it says I mm -hmm. did. So I remember when you called me. Oh my god, I was not I was happy. Livid. I was livid. I never got fired before because I never done anything to get me fired. Mm -mm. You know, I never. Ever. There was moments in Target where, and I can admit this, there were sometimes you get too comfortable at a job mm -hmm. where I act, I, you know, I did some dumb things. Nothing, you know, and the ones who were real, because I'm the kind of person, be real with me. Don't be behind the bush. Mm -hmm. Just tell me straight up. Yo, homie, this ain't this is not allowed. And I had people at Target like that. Samantha, you know, uh, like I said, Jen, like these Ray Jean, like they were cool, but we always looked over each other. If yep. Jeff, I did something, my homie Jeff would get on me. If he did something, I'd say, hey, Jeff, you know, chill out on that. We we, we did that for each other, you know. Yeah. I and it just wasn't like, it was just was the total opposite. And I remember regretting leaving Target because I, I was tired of the job, but at least I had good company. Mm -hmm. You know, people who was have my back, I have theirs. You know, if we didn't enjoy the job, we didn't enjoy it together. So we all go to Applebee's or something and just chill. And then I had that job and it was just like, wow. Yep. I remember when I went to pick up your last check, you were like, um, can you just go pick up my last check? I can't. Yeah, I, can't I don't even, even want to look at, at their people. face, especially Zach. They couldn't I, even, I went in there and I was like, oh, hey, guys, they couldn't even look at me. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you're guilty. Yeah, it's guilt. If you know you didn't do anything wrong, you could look at them. Exactly. That's, of course, it was guilt. But you all want to know the greatest thing I ever saw, <laughs> you know, so 
I learned this later. I went to a, oh, by the way, I hated GameStop at that moment. I didn't want nothing to do. I was like, first off, I already had a bad taste of them to know that GameStop is not as good as you think it is yeah. being around a video game environment. It was terrible. And it's funny because I'm hearing a lot of stories of workers now, like on YouTube, saying the same thing. Yeah. You know, but it's funny. I just laugh. But um, but what was I getting at? When you ran into someone. Oh, yeah, on. yeah. So I hated GameStop, so on and so forth. My wife and I moved to our new apartment. And there was a GameStop across the street. And I needed a game for my YouTube. So this is when I was doing it part time. And I didn't want to go there, bro, because I was avoiding it for like months. I didn't I was like, I'm going to Best Buy, Target, just buy a game yeah. there. And I, there was something, I can't remember what it was that made me go there. And I went to a, not that game style, I went to another one. It was like the nicest people there. Shout out to Kenwood, Ohio, uh, game style. They were the nicest people. And I, it hit me there. You can't blame a whole company because of uh, some idiots in one building. I don't think it was Kenwood. I think it was the Deerfield location. No, uh, well, no, that's, that's when they told me the story. Kenwood oh, okay, was the nice you, people. Got you, got you. And because that was across the street from us. Yeah. And I never forget, I told them thank you because I gave that target a few tries, uh, that GameStop a few tries. And I look, I said, is your manager here? I never forget the co the employee that I was about to complain. He said, is there a problem? I said, no, not a problem at all. I actually want to compliment y'all. And the manager came out. And I said, I haven't been around a good GameStop in a while. Mm -hmm. And he was like, why? I share with them the whole story. And you know what's funny? The manager there was like, oh, yeah, those people are terrible. Mm -hmm. He even knew it. He's the manager, like the Zach, like my other manager Zach. He was like, oh, yeah, I feel bad for anybody working over there. I wish I knew this. I would have mm -hmm. never, because we had so many GameStop around us. I would have went somewhere else because I told him, I said, this gave me a bad experience. He's like, I'm sorry you went through that. And it's on your regular being fired and all that. But, yeah. Zach and I forgot the district manager. And he said those. He said, "Let me just be real with you. One thing: every time a district manager comes, I try to give him all the information he can, he had he needs so he can get the heck out." Yeah. He said he's not for the people. He's about you know getting his raise or whatever he does. But I'm like, wow. So, yeah, that target that GameStop. Shout out to Kenwood GameStop. Changed my mind about it. Now, so I went to another GameStop. This is later down the line. I'm working at LA Fitness at this time, mm -hmm. and I'll share that story in a second. I'm in, I went to get a game at this GameStop and I saw somebody who used to come and substitute at the GameStop I worked at. Cool guy. He's very tall. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Hey, he saw me. He's like, Hey, I was wondering what happened to you. And I shared what happened. He's like, and he said, you wouldn't steal. I'm like, Oh, I know I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, thank you. He's like, that's crazy. You steal it. I was like, thank you. Are you kidding me? He's like 35. They find you for $35. And I was like, yeah, because I don't care. I'm a, I, I, I shared that story mm -hmm. so people can hear how stupid it is. But he was like, man, well, uh, and I asked, I said, so did Zach ever get his promotion? This is like eight, like six, no, like six months later after what happened. Yeah. So I'm like, so did Zach ever get his promotion? Because I'm still hoping the best for these people. Yeah. You know, I was asking like, okay, at least. He got the job. Yeah. That's what know. I'm thinking. So take one for the team so that other people can. Yeah. Rise. Don't do that because no, that's lying. Don't, don't ever lie no, for anybody. No, no. Don't lie for anybody. I tell people that don't tell me nothing and say, don't tell you no lie for me. I'm not going to lie for you. But uh, he was like, um, oh, you didn't hear. I was like, <laughs> what do you mean? He said, uh, when did you leave again? I told him the day. He was like, oh, yeah. Two months later, they shut down. Mm -hmm. I was like, shut down. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, the company as a whole was like, let's decrease some game stops. And, you know, the employees there wasn't as, you know, you know, mm -hmm. wasn't living up to par, I guess. So they shut down. I was like, so did they just move to a different building? He's like, no, Zach never got back, you know, got his job back. I said, what? He's like, yeah, he's now just a, uh, he's a, a sales. He does a customer service at Home Depot, which by the way, nothing wrong with working at Home Depot it only made me laugh because of how much he did just to try to get it to a certain place mm -hmm. and never got it in my heart. I believe you just told the truth. You would have got it. I'm telling you because stuff you comes try, back. Yes. If you tear other people down in order <coughs> to build me. yourself up, oh, you yeah. are literally coming up with your own demise. Like mm -hmm. You are literally tearing yourself down. In the and process. me, I was just asking to see, maybe he did get it, you know, 
He told me how long he's been working for GameStop. I'm like, maybe hopefully this time he finally got it. Because he said a district manager used to hold him by the neck and always tell him to give it to you. He never did. So I was like, mm-hmm. maybe he'll stop doing that. I gave it to him. No, they closed completely. I had to drive over there just to see it. I remember when we drove oh, over there. Oh, man. Yeah. It was black. It was no GameStop sign. They cleared house. And I mm-hmm. did nothing but laugh. That was a moment where I was just laughing. I was oh, like, yes. mm, that's it. And I told I said, my wife heard me. I was like, that's exactly what you get. Mm-hmm. And what did wife you say after GameStop happened? Oh, I can't remember what you say. This was a great opportunity for you to try this YouTube thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, mean, I didn't even is, do it full time yet. It's a great either. opportunity for you to go full time. And I didn't. I went to LA Fitness. Exactly. You know, so yeah. So all the employees were going, which I feel bad for the employees because you know, the the assistant manager, the manager, Zach, and the district manager were both were all jerks and looking out for themselves. But the other employees like myself, I can't remember the lady's name who I worked with, but other guys and gals, they were great. That's why I was glad to see the tall, like the tall guy I saw the other game stuff. He was just somewhere else. Yeah. So I, I, they were great, you know, but it was just. GameStop was a whole mess. Honestly, I should have left earlier. I never forget my wife told me to, that too, mm-hmm. because I was just not happy. It was not a, a joyous occasion. It was just how many credit cards or no, how many power up cards did you get? Forget yeah. people's experience. Forget actually giving people what they want, not what you want, not what you need, because it keeps your numbers up. That was what GameStop was about. I was like, hey, let's get our numbers up and we'll give people what they want after. Yeah. No, 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 no. It, it's actually the other way around. You know, if the if, I never forget a guest asked me for a new game, mm-hmm. and Zach got on my he said, uh, try to offer the pre on. I said he wanted new. He said I don't care, offer him the pre on. So I said the pre on. He's like, no, bro, I want the new. I told you. That. I said, yeah. And I, I'm like, I'm this kind of guy. I'm like, yeah. My boss told me to let you know about the pre on. And he went out there. He was like, uh, sir, I asked him for the new. And then he got mad at me. I'm like, dude, the guest told me what he wanted. Mm-hmm. I already said we have a pre-owned and a new. And he said it's new. It's a birthday gift. He doesn't want his son to open up a pre-owned game. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't understand why. That's not your that's not your position to know why. He wants what he wants. But that's the thing. I'm about, you know, this that's customer service. Yep. So I'm like, what's the problem? Anyway. So yeah, I just laughed. <laughs> I was laughing my butt off. And I was like, that's exactly what you get. You know, I hope the best for him. And the funny part, well, uh, uh, anyway, so, man, so that Mind was- you, a- you left GameStop, came home. I remember you were like, I got to find another job. Or I was at work. Yeah. You, and you was were at like, work. I got to find another job. And I was like, okay, well, you want me to ask about the hotel? And you were like, nah, 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 not right now, but I'm going to find another job. You came home with a new job the same day. Yeah. Let me tell y'all something real quick. A job like those, like the retails, probably not as easy now with the whole pandemic, but- during when things are fully open, a job like that that I'm doing are a dime a dozen. That's why I never really gave people excuses. I always had a job. Yeah. I never, when something messed up, I had something right after that. If I left a job, I had one the next day or the same day. Yeah. Even the situation I'm going to tell you about LA Fitness, I literally had a job the same day. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's why I always never gave people excuses. Like, oh, I can't. There's, I mean, I, I can understand some situations people can't, but for the most part, if you're in a place like me where there's just tons of stores around, there's something. Yeah. Whether you're washing dishes, taking out the trash, but some people have too much pride. Yeah. Oh, I can't do that. I, you know what kind of degree I got? And yet their bills are piling up. I'm telling you, the do- a dollar from working at McDonald's is the same dollar you can make by working at a Fortune right. 500 company. And if you want that a Fortune 500 company, dollar. that's cool. Yeah, go but for it. But make sure you take care of responsibilities. Don't be sitting there all high and mighty yourself and like, oh, no, I... Imagine me working at McDonald's. Oh, okay. Well, you know, mm-hmm. your car's gonna be taken. That's all. You're gonna be on the street. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want something great, then good, go for it. But don't do it to where your pride gets in the way. You don't, you know. Anyway, so but yeah, that's my point. Jobs a dime a dozen. So I literally got this job at LA Fitness. That was it was perfect because this is when I was starting to get a little bit more serious with my YouTube. So I wanted to work somewhere that's very close. LA and Fitness was literally on was the same literally street. On the, yeah, down the street. It was perfect. Mm-hmm. The manager there was great. The, the it was just it was such easy going. Mm-hmm. They saw my resume at, at Target and they loved it. I even told and I'm honest. I told them about the whole thing with GameStop. They mm-hmm. was like, "Oh, that's ridiculous. We're not going to count that against you." Even they said it was like it's not it's ridiculous. But I do say previous manager for a reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll get there in a second. So 
for uh, LA Fitness, I was there for almost two years. What'd you do? I I was a maintenance slash janitor. Mm-hmm. So um, I took care of all the machines. I made sure the place was clean. I did what I hated, which was clean the bathrooms. But it was what I it is what it is. And the greatest thing was my manager Brian. Mm-hmm. He was the greatest thing in that building. Who was the manager before that? I don't I really know. He liked, was the one with me. No, the one that hired you. I really liked her. Oh yeah, I forgot. Angie, Brittany. It was. It was. I can't remember. I don't know, but she I wasn't really there that her. long. I know. Yeah, yeah. She hired me. I'm sorry, and she was good, but she was on her way out. Yeah. So, but then Brian came into her place, and it was great. the The job was a lot for what it was at giving you. Like, imagine having to keep an goodness. entire LA fitness on your gym own clean, and then I yourself. find out later that it was never supposed to be on my own. It was supposed to have two people per building, but 90% of me working there or 80% was me on my own because the female, it was supposed to be one male, one female, the female, because of the, the female bathrooms mm-hmm. and a male, you know, so, but we had two females, one female, excuse me, for a very short time, very short. And so I had to do both jobs. It was a lot every day because people are sweating this this nasty bathrooms and this and that and yada 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 but for me what I was thinking was is right next to home and and you get to work out for free I get to work out for free it's 5 a.m to 2 so I had the whole day to work on my YouTube stuff Mm -hmm. well spend time with the Lord my wife and the the Lord in the morning and I spend time with my wife and after work and then do my YouTube stuff and then but your boy had only two hours three hours of sleep a day yeah. Unless I took a break, which it was very, I really took a break around that time. Now let's get into the issue of me getting fired. So after a year, I asked Brian, I let him know, uh, because I came from, I come from a background after a year, you're supposed to get a raise. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think almost any Ohio, job, in you know, the state of Ohio, Ohio you're yeah, to get a raise after a they year. was ducking it. I was waiting. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, I'm sweating. I'm not, doing this hard work and stuff and the job didn't get too hard until brian left i'll explain that in a second too it was hard but it got ridiculous when he left um it was just all out of order but anyway i came to him and said so it passed a year and i never got talked about my raise he was like oh you didn't i was like no he was like oh man my bad and i believe him because we grew you know we got to know each other he's a straight up dude he was cool so I'm like, okay. He went and called my district manager. Apparently she didn't like that. You know, she was like, well, this is the, pr-. I was like, well, if you want me to stay for all this work I'm doing, I'm doing double the work with no raise or nothing. Do Like I had like 12 or $13 an hour to take care of a whole LA fitness of where in Ohio is huge. It was huge. It is huge. It should have took, it should have had like three a whole, janitors. They had a whole basketball court, a whole cycling Everything. studio. Like it a was movie a very theater. large building. Yeah, it had a movie theater in there. Like it was meant for three people to clean, but it yeah. was only one, me. But I don't complain. And y'all know me, like I said, I'm a people person. I got to know every guest there. There was guests going to the manager that said, I'm doing a new contract here because he's here. I remember you got some commission. Yeah, of some of I guests. remember that. And yeah. <laughs> I never forget the salespeople didn't like that because that's their job. Mm-hmm. But, and I told them, I was like, I didn't do that. I didn't like tell them to buy another year. They just said he liked how I approached them. Cause that's the thing. I'm like, Hey, Hey, how you doing? How's your family? Hey, did you, did your wife get that thing yet? No. Okay. Well, how's the baby? You know, I would do that stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm just naturally like that. I like to make sure you're okay. Yeah. Like, and you kept the building clean for them. Yeah. So, like they want to go and to if a they needed gym, something, they can they go always to came LA to me. Fitness. Yeah. And if they needed something, they came to me and I, I provided that the best yeah. way I could. And so yeah, she didn't like that for some reason. And I'm like, well, if you want me to stay, I need some kind of, I never asked for anything. I kept my mouth closed. I would have headaches. There was one moment I worked too hard and I passed out on the floor. I don't know if you guys remember this. You used to post about it. I think it. I post. yeah, it was you on my, actually to- still on my channel. Yeah. I posted about it. I said, I almost had a serious accident. There yeah. was these stairs and nobody saw me because it was in a back room. My body was so drained from all that work I did at LA Fitness on my own and then doing YouTube where I only had two hours of sleep. It, it catches up to you mm-hmm. after a few months. And I remember I was near the stairs and my body just shut down. All I remember is I woke up hours later and my boss stood over me like, you all right? And I was like, huh? I didn't even know where I was. He was like, Duran, 
you got to take a break, bro. Exhaustion. Yeah. And Brian understood completely. He was like, you're doing a lot. I know we don't have another employee yet. We're trying. You're still, the place is looking good, but dude, this could have been bad. You fell over the steps and your body, for some reason, and it's kind of hard to explain, but my hands came out as I fell. It was like my body just naturally reacted. I only remember doing this, but my hands naturally came out and caught the fall. Mm-hmm. Now, by the grace of God, I didn't just fall flat on my skull because mm-hmm. Lord knows where I would have been at because it was cement floor. And when you called me, I was like, it's time to leave. It is time to leave mm-hmm. LA Fitness. Yeah. And he was like, all right, take a break. So I took a long break. He actually had gave me the day off. Brian was cool. So anyway, that's just how hard I work. But after the lady, um, the district manager found out that I was going to leave, because you're not going to just not pay me for doing double the work. I honestly should have that lady who's not working anymore. I should get her pay and mine. Mm-hmm. But I ain't going there. I'm just here. Just give me a raise. Show me that you appreciate me. Or at least give me an employee. Yeah, they gave help. me nothing. They gave uh, I got nothing. And Brian tried. But the, it wasn't his. It was the district manager's job and his job. But so she finally caved in and gave me a, a dollar. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Just show some kind of appreciation. So now Brian is about to leave. And this is when I should have left. But Brian's about to leave. He found something greater. And shout out to Brian, too, if you're listening, because you was a really great boss. But he was about to leave. And when he did, we had this new manager. Now, I kid y'all not, that had to have been the most stressful manager to work under. She always made an excuse. I have kids. Well, don't take the manager job. Mm-hmm. She barely showed up for work on time. There was times I had to wake up extra early to open up the building. That's not my job. Mm -mm. I don't open up the building. You know, I go in and make sure the building's ready to go, but to open it up, that's the, you know, her job or the employee she hires at the front desk. Yeah. The The building opens at 5 a.m. Yeah. There would be, I remember, we only had one car then. And I remember we would wake up and you'd be like, I got to go open up the building again. I was like, okay, I'll go with you. I'll just work out. And we would go there and there would be a line of people mm-hmm. at the door. And that was waiting. on my day off. This is at like six o'clock, an hour later, mm-hmm. waiting for the building to open up. Yeah. And think, like I said, it's always good to make sure you have a good relationship with your guests. Yeah. Because they love when they you. saw, oh yeah. And I love them too. Mm-hmm. I still have, you know, some of them I have to keep in touch. They're happy for me. Uh, there was, I never forget. I walk out the, I come out my car. They was like, oh, of course, Duran always shows up. Nobody else want to do their job. Duran always doing their job. Duran's always working for the manager. Like, and I never forget, guests would be calling the district manager, the lady I was talking about who didn't want to give me a raise and say, what kind of employees you have, you have here? The manager can't come and do her job. He has to come in. He's like, sir, how much you get paid? And I told him, because I'm like, okay, this could this give me another raise. And cool, <laughs> uh, 13 an hour. He's like, that's a shame. He does everything and the manager's job. And, you know, so mm-hmm. they're already looking bad. And we always had these inspections a year and I will always complete it. Mm-hmm. There was one moment they tried to get me, like they would be making up this stuff. And I don't know why they, you would, you would think you was happy to have a good employee. I never rubbed in their face. I actually guys and gals was a person that mind my own business. Mm-hmm. I never really talked to them much. I did my job. I you honestly they, didn't talk to anyone. I was it's tired. So funny Cause I would go in there and people would be like, Oh yeah welcome welcome and like they'd see you come up and hug me or kiss me and they'd be like oh that's um, your wife are you are that, that y'all are married and I'm just like yeah it's my husband that's why I'm in here all the time and they're like I didn't know Duran was married I'm like he's been working here for like two years <laughs> yeah and that's just <laughs> y'all don't talk to because him? I mind my business I do say a few words and I keep it moving plus I ain't gonna front game I style. have a hard working mentality yeah and then the game style too I was I had very already trust issues yeah because I didn't want nobody to use me again and two I had a lot of coworkers and a lot of managers who just slacked off. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of them just being office on their phone, laughing about stuff and doing this and doing that. And I'm like, I don't want to be caught in that circle. Yeah. I'm like, no, you have managers on the phone at the front desk. It's like, get off the phone. Guests are walking to you. Yeah. You know, my last manager did that at LA fitness and yeah, we'll get to that in a sec. Cause that is actually what got me fired. Um, so yeah, it was just terrible. That had to be one of the worst bosses to work for. And her always excuse was, I got a kid. Okay. But you, it, I understand if you're a single mom, oh, I ain't single mom, I'm married. Okay, so what's the problem? You took this position. Mm-hmm. And from day one, 
I always got to, I, I, I worked basically seven days a week. Mm-hmm. You, you know? did work seven days a and week. And the place was good. Because like I say, I don't care if I hated it. Mm-hmm. I made sure it was 100% because I know it's not going to be on my name. The place is bad. Yeah. And I would sometimes think they're setting me up for it. Because like I said, I had very bad trust issues. I'm like, they must be setting me up. But I'll always complete it. And it would be funny. It'd be some moments the district manager would show up out of nowhere. I'm like, what is he doing here? And I'm like, they was I being set you. up? I don't mm-hmm. know. Like, I'm, it's just it's speculation. But I always get it done before he shows up. So I always get it. He like the not the district manager, the district manager's boss, he would come in like the owner or whatever. And he would love me because I went up to him and shook his hand. I you know. And I went back to my business because I ain't going to kiss up. I don't kiss up nobody. Yeah. Oh, you're the, oh, Hey, how you doing? I'm Duran. I this, this and that. And I'm about to go over here and I go back to work. And so fast forwarding after that, cause that was straight. I should have left after that manager. I should have. So now she's gone. Because finally, the district manager got some sense and decided, you know, what, she's not fit for the job. Mm-hmm. And I hate that, you know, but at the same time, I'm sitting here and it was for months. I'm basically doing seven days a week. You are doing seven days. Oh, a week. and one more example, one more thing that happened was I never forget. I finally had a vacation, took a week off. And I remember saying to them, my boss, you sure you got this? I'm coming in for you and your employees. Me going for a week, I can... I remember telling my wife, I can only imagine what that place gonna look like. Oh yeah. Y'all, I went on vacation and came back. I kid y'all not. Guests ran to me hugging me. Mm-hmm. They was like, thank God you're back. I was like, I was gone for a week. Dude, oh, and the manager, the district manager, she came in and told me, Oh, we got somebody who's been here two years before you. Like she was so happy. She said, He works for me. He does the job so well. So I'm just sitting there like, cool. That means, you know, because yeah, I'm yeah. thinking to myself, if the place is trash, I got to clean it. Yeah. So I don't care if you're trying to rub that in my face. That works for me, you know. But they come in hugging. I'm like, oh, no. What am I about to go in here and see? <laughs> They're like, thank God you're here. I'm sorry. You're going to have your hands tied. But this place is trashed. I kid y'all not. Black floor. Like, it was disgusting mm-hmm. the showers were disgusting I never I still have that big picture in my the toilets the everything and mind y'all I still never had I never had another employee I was still taking care of the whole building mm-hmm. female room too by myself there was moments like one like for a couple months I would have a new employee and then they'll leave mm-hmm. but like I said 80 percent of the time of the two years of me there I was by myself mm-hmm. you know getting great scores why because I was there Guess when to sign, renew their, their their yearly membership or whatever. Why? Because, and they told the boss in their face because of him. And one guy, he made sure he was older. He was like, make sure he gets a commission. I'm going to come back to this desk. And if he does, and I'm going to have him here. He's not going to lie to me. <laughs> hey, look, even the guests say I don't lie. But he said, he's not going to lie to me. I'm going to ask him, did you get that commission? So I'm a, let me ask y'all something. For those who own buildings, who work in places, if you hear of an employee like me, would you want to keep them? Would I would. You would think. You know, he doesn't, I never complain to the boss about how, you know, they have to clean the bathrooms. No, I know the job I signed up for. So I completed yeah. it. If I don't like it, I go somewhere else. Yep. So they never had a complaint from me. You would think you would treat him right. You think. I ain't think saying throw money at him, but don't treat him like trash. Yeah, I appreciate them. Yeah. There would be bosses that have their rooms dirty. How you have your room dirty after a day after me vacuuming? I would never forget that. It was this one guy... Every day, his place was full of trash. Mm-hmm. I'm like, do you not like me or something? <laughs> like, how is it that bad where the Brian, this is when Brian was working. He was like, yo, man, why is your play room trashed all the time? I said, that was the one guy who always had my back. He said, Duran has to come here every day to clean your room? It was this one of the sales managers. <laughs> anyway, so a new manager comes in. And it was problem from day one. Not with me, but when I tell you, it was one of the most laziest bosses ever. I thought the lady before her was lazy. At least she said she had a child. Still no excuse. But this other one had no kids. Now she had to be my age or younger at that time. And she did basically nothing but look at her phone. Her phone was her best friend. She would come to me, hey, Derek, you come get us some donuts? She wouldn't even go outside. I'll have to go pick up donut because I was like, okay, yeah, it gave me a moment to go outside. Mm-hmm. But it also showed me like, dude, you're on the phone. You can go and do it. But hey, I took that advantage to go outside and get a break. Yep. Get the donuts. 
whatever. Shout out to her on this part. She did pay for me to have a donut. So, <laughs> you know, I got something I had to pay for. So, but still, it was just like nothing. The place, I'll be like, yo, look, can you check the women's restroom for me? Because I had, because I was by myself, I had to, I had only certain times to go to the women's restroom mm-hmm. to make sure it was good. So outside of those times, if a guest tell me something, I need the manager to go and do it. It'll take her forever to do it. She's busy. I'm like, you're on your phone texting your boyfriend. Get off the phone. She literally be on the phone talking on it. And this is when stuff got bad. It was a new sales manager that showed up and she was a, and she was something else too. She was late. She was one of the people that had her feet on the desk and just sit there, not making any sales, just be on the desk. Her boyfriend come, her friend would come and they'll just sit in her office. And again, like I say, I mind my business. Mm-hmm. I don't say anything. I'm not their boss. I just go and do my job and get out. This is when I was at that. I was in that moment where I was like, do my job and leave. Yep. Do my job and leave. Do my job and leave. Like, Cause I'm like, it got ridiculous. Like everybody's partying in the front. They're laughing, giggling. The place is a mess, you know? And I'm not talking about my part. I'm talking about their stuff. Guests are mad. This is when I, this is the first time I've seen guests mad at, uh, like there were some guests that were disappointed and there were some guests where you can never please no matter what you do. But then there was some guests just mad and they, they was, had to be, they had the right to be mad. Yeah. I remember a guest, a few guests came up to me like, is that the manager up there? And I'm like, wait, and I had to look. I was like, oh yeah, that's her. What kind of man? Who hired her? I literally walked in the door, walked past her. She's just on her phone. I had to say, she said, <laughs> well, I had to slam the desk in front of her and say, hi. And then she's like, hi, and looks at her phone again. I'm like, ma'am, I don't know. I stay away from over there. And she's like, you better. It's good for you. It keeps you out of trouble. I said, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't. And then another guest came and another guest came. And I never forget one guest do her off where she got mad. I don't know what she did and told the district manager about with me. So she, a guest goes to her. And by the way, I'm giving fast story version. This is a long, this was a two year thing. Mm-hmm. So this is the end of it. Um, so a guest goes to her and says, you are, ne- you are never doing your job. You are terrible at your job. He should be your boss. Now, I didn't know this mm-hmm. until she calls me over, my boss. I'm like, hi. She was like, because apparently the guest told her to call me over here. So I said, oh, and so I went over and I was like, and she's already discussed. I'm like, what's her problem? And the guest is like, I asked her to come bring you over here because I got to tell you something. None of these boss, all these managers, front desk can't touch how good of a worker you are. There are four of them up here and one of you, and you're doing their work, your work. And I know because I've been in LA Fitness for a while, there's supposed to be two, at least two janitors. And I've been here for eight months and I haven't seen you and one other employee, but he left in two weeks or she left in two weeks. Mm-hmm. She said, that's a shame that I walk in here and they're on their phone while you're working. I have to hear a hi from you. He, she was like, you literally, because I used to have headphones on, listen to music as I'm cleaning. She was like, you would literally take your headphones off and come and talk to us. I can't even get a hello from this manager. This is a manager. And she's just, I'll tell you that manager was getting red because she was Caucasian. So she would get red, mm-hmm. but she would have a smile on her face because, you know, the guest is right there. And she was like, this is disgusting. Y'all disgusting to treat this young man like that. I've been here for eight months. I haven't seen none of y'all give this man a hand. He's sweating, his hands are bruised and this and that. And then he's fixing machines, he's doing this. She says, every 30 seconds, I see him somewhere else cleaning. She was you like- you, you legit were yeah. all over that building. And so, and this is funny. She was like, sir, how much you get an hour? And so she ended the boss of the was like, oh, he can't share that information. She was like, fine, I'll look at you. What does he get an hour? Is it that little? Is that little, right? Where he can't even share it. Well, no, it's just rules. But that, that, that ain't no law. She says, only a law where you can't share it. You, they say they advise you don't, but it's no law. Good point. And so, yeah, she got mad. And she was like, he gets, I think it was 13 an hour. No, it was 14 an hour because I got the extra dollar. She was like 14 an hour to take care of this whole huge building. She's like, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. but he should have what you're getting paid and you should have what he's getting paid. That was it for her. Now, the guest left, 
in my mind, though, I'm like, thank you, because that's what I thought. I thought about that all the time. I'm like, as my, I'm doing three people's jobs, I should get all both of their paychecks and mine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I should have left. But and the thing was, the guests made me want to stay because they was very, it's weird to say hospital, but, but they was very nice. Yeah. Young and old, mm -hmm. you know. In the morning, there's a lot of older people, and they were great. They loved you, and they loved me. When I yeah, came to when visit they, you, they yeah. were just like, hey, This is the wife? Fun. Yeah. So, yeah, they were cool people. So, the girl, the manager who was on her phone, her and her little click friend, because that girl, that the new manager to sit the, the sales. sales manager mm -hmm. and the regular manager were both, like, click friends on their phones, he, 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 with the, you know, boys and stuff. And so... They was talking in their office. Now, again, this is something they could have been talking about me. Who knows? But they wasn't happy. Right? They didn't want to be around me. I don't know why that wasn't me. I didn't mm -hmm. tell her to say anything like that, even though what she's saying is true. But I never told her. I didn't even know what the conversation was about until they called me there. So she has a vacation the next day. It's like, you just started, but you already have a vacation. Whatever. You know, mm -hmm. you're not doing anything anyway. So the district manager comes and watches for a week. And... It was weird. She was very standoffish. Usually we were cool. Mm -hmm. You know, like we had a respect for each other. Mm -hmm. She didn't like the whole raise thing. Now, speaking of that, my next year was about to be in two weeks or three weeks. And they know I don't get taken advantage. I'm going to ask for my next year raise. Mm -hmm. It's going to be $14 to $15, which again, I'll ask any manager, a guy who's taking care of the whole building, doing three people's jobs, and does it complain to you? The least you can do is give them an extra dollar an hour, right? You're not going to complain, are you? Of course you're not. You're going to give them that extra dollar an hour. Like, that's not going to kill you. Mm -hmm. Instead of paying two uh, people $14 an hour. So you're going to pay $28 an hour or just get $15 an hour. And the job looks like two people are working. Yeah. Because people will say, they're like, where's the other employee? I was like, it's just me. I used to get that so much. Yo, where's the other employee at? It's just me. No, come on. I said, like, yeah, it's just me. Oh, and y'all, I would come by at night to make sure the night guy would do his job. Mm -hmm. That was funny too. It, I won't even be worried about like, because I cared about the building, I would do stuff like that. That was just something extra on the side. So she goes on vacation and comes back. Again, she stand office. And this is weird. She asked me to go get donuts like I usually did, right? I do. And I come back. And the whole day, she doesn't say nothing to me. I mean, I'm like, what's, and I just ignore it. I'm like, maybe she's having a bad day. It could be something else. I do my job, go home. I come back. She says, Duran, can I share something? Can I talk to you? I was like, sure. You know, what's up? Uh, this is, we're going to let you go. Again, it threw me off. I'm like, for what? Now, this is the dumbest manager I've ever heard. She was like, uh, no reason in particular. I said, you have no reason to let, oh, dang it, I forgot. Last thing before that happened, we had a, uh, it was like a monthly checkup where the higher ups would come and check the whole building. Yeah. I had the best score in the whole district four times in a row. Mm -hmm. This was my fourth time in a row. There is literally no excuse. I have guests saying one that they're re-signing, tons of them, but saying they were re-signing because of me. I kept the place right, even for managers who I didn't even have to. That's the funny thing. I didn't have to clean for them. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have gotten in trouble. But I said, you know what? Why not? Let me help them out, too. Even though they didn't, like, you know, outside of Brian, wasn't working much. And three, of the whole district, that means other, that we had a lot of LA fitnesses in, where we, in our district. I was the best one four times running. So you really have nothing on me, nor did I did anything. There's no See, reason There's why you no be reason. At all. At least GameStop had, it was a stupid answer, but at least they had something to go by. Mm -hmm. Something they tried, I should say. I, she said, there's no, no reason. We just want to let you go. And of course, the sales manager who has nothing to do with this, this conversation. This is why I know this was clicking. Because she's not my boss. I have no relationship with her. She does sales. You know, so I'm mm -hmm. like, what are you doing here? You know, but that's why I'm thinking to myself. And I'm like, uh... Can I get the reason why you can't just fire somebody just because you can get in trouble law, uh, legally for that in this kind of business? Private owned, that's a different story. This is a this is different. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I already signed the papers and I already sent to my district manager. I said, your district signed off on it. This is why I knew she had something to do with it because she needs a reason. Yeah. So I realized she didn't like and it didn't register yet. There's two weeks. My pay raise coming and I already knew how much hell she put me through on the first one. Mm -hmm. You know. 
which you know anyway so i'm confused i'm i'm still i didn't leave the room because i'm confused i'm like oh i need an answer <clears throat> excuse me i need an answer why am i getting fired there's you have nothing on me so why am i getting fired it's just not working out what kind of manager says not working out and everything's perfect I said, you're not showing up for work. I show up to work for you and cover for you. And it's not working. That doesn't make sense. So I'm throwing all this stuff at her, which makes her look more stupid. To even the redhead, the sales manager was looking like, dang, crap. Like he's throwing mm -hmm. logic. She's like, and she was really looking at the main manager like, what are you going to say? Because he's actually being real. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like, you didn't show up for work before you went on vacation. I, you called me and I did. So what do you have on me? This checkup was this, I was the best in the whole district. So why are you finally firing me? And again, she kept saying, I, and then she gave the dummy, I, I don't really wanna go into it. I just wanna say, you know, go ahead and get your stuff, you can go. I said, so can I have your district uh, manager's number? No, she already knows. I was like, so you can't even give me the dish. I said, what's going on? There's mm. something going on. That's the, I used to be a manager at Target. Well, I used to be a boss at Target in, in an area. And I know when you go, when you're the boss of somebody, you have to get give your boss, like my manager, I have to give my manager a reason mm -hmm. why something is happening. And, you know, something. So that's why I'm like, okay, because of my experience in that situation, I know you gave a reason unless the district manager doesn't like me either, which I said she was already distant for a minute. Yeah. So I'm like, so you have no reason at all. And I wanted to hear it from her mouth. So you have, I wish I had my phone to record that too. Cause I just wanted to, I would have had it under my, you know, lap or something just to, so they can, I can play this. But I was like, you have no reason at all to fire me. You just doing it. Yeah. I said, oh, okay. Well, you have a good day. Got my stuff. I hugged whoever I could in that building. Then she was a jerk too. She says, you can't be in here too long because you don't work here no more unless you have a membership. So then she was being a jerk. So I couldn't even say bye to every. That's the one regret I have. I could not go back and say bye to anybody that I really, because it was only the certain people there at a certain time. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't say bye to the other people who I was nice to, who even the, none of the people who uh, signed their new memberships was there. It was people that was I knew there, but I didn't even have enough time to say bye to all of them. I said bye to two. And this one lady almost cussed the front desk because she, she was like, where are you going? I said, they fired me. She says, for what? You do everything around here. I said, exactly. She says, and she had to go, she said, did you have relations with one of them? I said, heck no, I'm married. Mm -hmm. She says, oh, okay. She said, I knew that. I was just wondering, like, there, that's, that has to be the only reason you're getting. I said, yeah, no, I'm married. She was like, oh, no. I said, oh, you want to know something else? And this is when a group of them started to come to me. Because like I said, I was cool with everybody. So they're like, what? Because she's telling everybody. He's getting fired. And the guy, one of the guys was like, for what? You do everything. Mm -hmm. And you have the best attitude. Heck, she's, he's like, that don't even make any sense. Those people don't do nothing up there. And I was like, you tell them that. They even are jerks enough to say, I got five minutes to get my stuff. I kid you not. When I left, I'm pretty sure a lot of them left too, because I went working out like this is two weeks later, three weeks later at another gym. Didn't work. I just worked out there. Mm -hmm. I saw some of the same people that was working out there at this gym and they saw me and they were so happy to see me. They were like, you work here. I said, no, no, I don't work here. Uh, no, nah, I don't work here. I just working out. It was like, oh, we had to leave. There's nobody there to do the right thing. Yeah. And it was like, it got worse as soon as you left. But yeah, so I got, I, you know, I got fired. That's why I said, two jobs that I did when I did the right thing. Mm -hmm. And even after you left LA Fitness, I remember when you came to me and you were just like, I got fired again. Yeah. <laughs> for nothing. I was like, at least <laughs> give me, what? I thought you get fired for doing the wrong thing. It was like, what is going on? If that's not a sign to go for, because this is my wife at this time was telling me for three years to go for my I was like, full time. Maybe this is a, a sign that you should be doing YouTube full time. You're already doing it 40 hours a week. You might as well just make that your job. And you were mm -hmm. like, no, no, I got to get another job. And I'm just like, this yeah, I still does didn't not listen. listen. Now, shout out to Marriott. That job didn't give me issues. Oh, no. But I, I had also been there for like three years. Yeah, so like, but even me as an individual. Oh, no, they loved you. Yeah. They loved you more than they loved me. And I've been there forever. <laughs> I remember. That's why I said jobs are dime a dozen. I got a job the next day. 
No, it was because, the same day. The same day. Because Kelly, who was my wife's boss, she was trying to recruit me out of LA Fitness to work for her already mm-hmm. because she saw a hard over. She was like, oh, and her, she, her and her husband was like the head of a lot of Marriott. So they mm-hmm. was like, oh, we can have this guy. And that was such an easy job. I worked hard, but they didn't overwork me. We had the right employees. Yeah. It just was smooth until the day I was like, okay. When we moved to San Diego from Ohio to San Diego and I transferred Marriott, I told my wife, I got to go full time. Yeah. And it's been two years. You were there about six months in Ohio. Yeah. Um, and like two, a week or two at the one here in San Diego. Maybe not even a not week. Not even that, yeah. It was like you, I remember you, you went ahead because we got, you, you got called for the job first. Mm-hmm. Cause I remember we were looking for jobs at Marriott's and they called you first. And they were like, hey, uh, your husband, we have an opportunity for him now, but we need somebody to start mm-hmm. like now. Right now. And they were like, we were like, all right, well, you know what? You go now. I'll stay here for 30 days. I'll put our 30 day notice in at our apartment. Mm-hmm. I'll do my last, you know, 30 days at the job and I'll meet you out in San Diego. I remember and that. We yeah. got blessed with two months free rent in San Diego. So it was perfect. Yeah. And I remember the day you called, you were just like, I am not supposed to be here. Yeah. And I was like, well. I mean, you've only been there not even a week. Should go, go for full it. time. I've been telling you this for three years. Yep. And uh, here we are now. Yep. Now but it's been what two years? It's well, almost two years. It's 2021 now. So yeah. Yeah. We moved just here about. in 2018. Yeah. So that taught me a lot that even when you do everything you're supposed to. And for those who are asking, you did nothing wrong. No. Mm-mm. Except what I was accused for in GameStop, which is not true. But they can literally show the writing. You know, and be like, well, he said it. So that's, you know, a lesson to not lie yeah, for anybody. That's what you get for lying, you know. But like I said, they got theirs anyway. So you said, because you heard what happened with the game stock. Yep. LA Fitness, I don't know what the heck was that, you know. Yeah. That one, I don't even know if they're still open now. That was Kenwood LA Fitness, you know. But, um, I don't know. We just, yeah, we that, progress. We keep it moving. Yeah. That's why it's like, go for what you want. And listen and see the signs. Because like I said, I should have been gone already. Yep. And so that's fine. I listen now. And now I'm in this. And I'm going to keep pushing. Because it's still a grind. And we're not where we're, I'm not where I want to be yet with this channel. But we'll get there. We will. We'll definitely get there. Well, guys, this has been entertaining. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to say the least. Um, as he mentioned, just, we just want to encourage you guys to go for your dream, you know, go for your dream. If you can balance it while working a nine to five, make it happen. Cause eventually there's going to be an opportunity that opens up. Don't do what I did though. And overwork yourself. Yeah. Please don't Don't overwork yourself. Cause he doesn't By the grace of, no, I listen now, but I didn't back then. That's what I said. Uh, We was uh, married. You wasn't listening. Yeah. But, uh, don't overwork yourself. If it wasn't the grace of God, I could have cracked my skull. Who knows what happened there with me? So. Yeah. And if the people around you are not appreciating you as an employee, somebody will. Somebody definitely will. Like I said, Kelly was appreciated me, and I was a year into that building. She was like, "You can leave this and come here," and she I should have listened. I should have listened. <laughs> she was. I should have listened. But hey, at least she opened doors for me as soon as I got fired. You know, that's the blessing too. Was immediately as soon as I got fired, I got a job right away. So God always provided. You know, it was never a moment where I was just sitting in a room like, "Dang." Yeah. You know, like, what can I do? There's always, that's why I say, if you have a humble heart saying, okay, I'll take whatever the Lord, get, what I, whatever I can get, you know. Yep. You know, and then when you know it's time to just go for your dream, then go all in, like I'm doing now. So it could take a while. It might not take a while. For me, it's taking a while, but, you know, I'm in a better spot. Yeah. But anyway, guys, this is the first episode of the Iron Angel podcast. Yes, Thank sir. you guys so much for listening. Um, a lot of you guys knew his story, but not necessarily the details of his story. You knew he I was, know, yeah. you know, he worked at Target and then at GameStop and now he's full time, but you never knew like how that happened. <laughs> and it's been an interesting journey to say the least. Yeah, it's been interesting. But learned a lot. Yes, definitely. We love no, this. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, no ill will um, to anybody. Like I said, GameStop and LA Fitness as a whole, I have no, I have no hate towards anybody. Even the people who did me dirty, you know, yeah. they have, you know, they just not, their heads are not in the right place. And I hope the best for them. 
like I said, I was still hoping Zach still got his manager job and, you know, the workers at LA Fitness who did nothing. I hope the best for him. But the best you can do is show up, do your job to the best of your ability and be, be an a light. example. Yep. Be a light, be an example wherever you go. But we love this whole podcasting thing. Make sure you comment below your thoughts <laughs> on him getting fired from GameStop and LA Fitness. But also comment below some topics that you would like for us to cover because we like talking, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all so much, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Well, we will catch you guys on another episode of the Iron Angel podcast. Love y'all. Thanks for listening. See you.